Good morning. May the congregation please rise for our intro song, Welcome Into This Place. Happy Sabbath, God's children. And how are you today? We serve a good God, and He's worthy to be praised. Our call to worship. Exalt the Lord, our God, and worship at His footstool, for He is holy. Give unto the Lord the, gl the glory due unto His name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all ye earth. This is the day of the Lord's victory. Let us be happy. Let us celebrate. May God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. As we worship you today, O oh God, may heaven come down and glory fill our souls. And may, we, may our hearts rejoice in you, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And I will bless the Lord.
is holy. great things he has done great things he has done great things he has done great things, done great things. bless his holy recite our affirmation of faith. It is found in Isaiah 58 chapter verses 13 and 14. For most of us, we can just recite it because it's been a few years we have been doing this. And so you would have known it from the heart. Affirmation of faith, Isaiah 58 chapter. Let us do it together. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing a pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You all did so well. We're going to sing Sabbath rest. Sabbath rest. Praise on this day of 
have come to be blessed on this day of Sabbath rest. We set our work aside, we leave our cares behind on this day of Sabbath. Verse 1, Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. I want to welcome you in a very special way to our Sabbath um, service this morning. Is there any visitors among us? I want to welcome you in a very special way. We appreciate you being here with us. We appreciate that you took time off to be in here with us to celebrate Sabbath. So we are grateful for your presence. Can you please give a handshake? Shake out, we appreciate you. Our pastor will be here next week, Sabbath. Amen. Um, don't forget the Wednesday night meeting um, to, um, to tune in and to share your testimony and to be blessed by others' testimony. The Bible says they overcame by the blood of the land and by the word of testimony. So it is a service that you should not miss and be part of. Don't forget also the noonday prayer. A lot has happened, and I pray that if you can join. And the second shutting, we have um, Sister Spencer, who lost a dad. And some of the other things just happening. <laughs> the Bible tells us that in the last days, those things will happen. That will be perilous time. And I pray that we trust God and don't give up in spite of what's going on. Trust God, and he'll see us through. And also, um, it is a blessing. The, we have some other elders that could not be there. Elder William, he could not be here today. So um, I pray that you remember the leaders. <laughs> I just want to give you an idea. Remember when Moses led the children of Israel from Egypt. Just remember what Moses had to go through. Actually, Moses missed the promised land as a result of those people who's led it. So pray for your leaders. They are human beings like us, like you and I. Pray for them. They need the wisdom of God. When Solomon ascended the throne, after offering his sacrifice to God, he was asked what he wanted. And he wanted wisdom to guide God's people. God's people, it requires wisdom to lead them. Remember, they're intelligent set of people. And so to be able to lead them aright, to make decisions that will 
worship God and serve God. They need the wisdom of God. So pray for your leaders. Pray for those who are not well. And it is not a leader's part only to pray for people. You are um, also part of it. These are the people that you expect to spend eternity with. Pray for them. Pray that God will give them strength to make it. And so I want to thank you for being here this morning. It is a blessing to be in the house of God. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to dwell in the tent of wicked men. So praise God for being here, and I pray that you continue to praise the Lord. May we all stand for our opening hymn, 524, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Tis so sweet to, to trust, trust in Jesus, Jesus, just to take him at his words, just to upon his promise just to know the set Lord Jesus Jesus is how I've trust him how I prove him more and more Jesus Jesus precious Jesus oh for grace to trust him Just to trust his cleansing blood and in simple faith to plunge me near the healing cleansing blood. Jesus, Jesus, this is how I trust him. Church, happy Sabbath. Good morning. This morning's scripture reading is from Matthew 18, verse 15, 16, and 17. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, 
Go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. Amen. We have now entered um, into the part of our worship service where we're going to invite the Lord's presence. And uh, we're going to ask the praise team to lead us into that. As we come before you this morning, Lord, we want to thank you, O oh God, for bringing us here safely. Father God, thank you for keeping us throughout this week, Lord. There are so many things that have happened this week, uh, hence the, the earthquake that we experienced yesterday. But Lord, you saw it fit to keep us. Father God, we thank you, O oh God, for keeping each and every household that is present here today safe. Father God, as we come into your presence, dear Lord, we invite you into our midst. Be with us today, we pray, dear God. Father God, we're asking you, Lord, to outpour your Holy Spirit on us, dear Father. Father God, this morning we come before your presence and we want to thank you, dear Father, for the, our visitors that are in our midst. Heavenly Father, they could have been elsewhere today, but they chose to worship with us today, and so we want to thank you. Father God, we also want to present before you the sick 
and the shut-in, dear Lord. Father God, we're asking you at this time, dear Father, to touch each and every person that are listed and those are not listed in our bulletin today, Lord. We're asking you, dear Father, to touch them from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet, dear God. Father God, we know that you are with them. And for those that are feeling a little better today, Lord, we want to give you thanks and praise. Father God, we also want to uh, give you uh, thanks for our pastor, dear Father. Thank you for what you're doing in his life at this time, dear Father. Father God, thank you for, we're thanking you ahead for bringing him to our church service next Sabbath, dear Lord. Father God, we're also thanking you, dear Father. Be with those who are mourning at this time, dear Lord. I'm asking you to touch them and comfort them, I pray. Father God, I'm also praying this morning for your manservant who will be presenting your word, dear Father. Father God, help us, Lord, to, to prepare our hearts to hear him. And Father God, we're asking you at this time to speak through him. And let us not just hear your words, but let us do your words. Do what you say for us to do, dear God. Father God, we thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. And Father, may you be with us throughout this day and throughout this new week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. We have entered into the part of our worship service where we're going to invite the deacon and deaconesses to come forward to collect our day's offering. There are several ways that we can give, and it is uh, posted on our screen.
may the congregation please stand. Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, O oh God, for providing for us. Thank you for providing for your people. Thank you for giving us a, a job so that we're able to return to you, dear Father. Father, bless all those who had to give today, dear Lord, and bless those who did not have to give, we pray. Thank you for everything we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. We give thee by thine own Whatever gives may be all that we have is thine, O oh Lord, I trust, O oh Lord, from thee. Amen. It is children's story time. Would the children please come forward? And as they're coming forward, they're going to be baskets, and we'll be collecting an offering for children's story. Children's story I'm presenting today, but we need your help to continue children's story. So if you would like to tell a story, please see our children's ministry leader, and you can sign up to tell a story. All right, they're coming forward. They're going to have baskets. I don't see the basket. And they're picking up an offering. Amen, amen. All of the children of the world, whether they are black All right, or we're white, up all the precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Amen. Jesus loves Thank the little you. children, all the children of the world. When okay, you can come forward, kids. Away, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Oh, they are there and they are looking. Thank you. As the little children, all the children of the world, whether they're all black or white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for keeping us safe. And please bless the offering. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. Thank you, Caitlin. Hello, boys and girls. Uh-oh. I don't think anyone is out there. They're not hearing me. Hello, boys and girls. Hello. All right. So for today's story, it's called The Littlest Pear. So it says, Noah, I want you to build a special boat called an ark, God told Noah. I will bring you two of every animal. As Noah stood at the entrance of the ark, he looked up at the long line of animals forming in front of him. Just as God had told him, 
There were two of every kind of bird, even of the little creeping creatures. Stay in line, Noah tell the animals. There will be room for all of you. All right, so it says, the animals watched wide eye in awe as Noah worked hard with hammer and saw. They watched him all day, and as it grew dark, the parrot exclaimed, I believe it's an ark. Early next morning, as bees began humming, wise Noah announced, soon rain will be coming. There'll be a great flood. It will cover the land. I'm afraid you won't find a dry place to stand. God has asked me to build this huge wooden boat, which will save us all and keep us afloat. Noah told animals to line up, two of each kind. How many is two? Can I see how many is two? Awesome! So two make a pair, right? Two make a pair. Let's make sure that we leave no two behind. As the animals gathered two by two, the littlest pair came into view. The termites are coming, cried a large kangaroo. Somebody do something, begged the cow with a moo. The giraffe shook his head till his neck felt quite sore. The lion began pacing and started to roar. The spider stopped spinning the web she was making. Her heart was a flutter. Her legs were shaking. See them? When the two little termites got into their places, all around them, they saw angry animal faces. Hello, everybody. They whispered a greeting, and all of a sudden, the sheep began bleating. You'll eat all the bark and the lumber, too. When the ark begins to sink, what will we do? The hyena stopped laughing and let out a howl. Invited you to screech the frightened old owl. The rhinoceros bellowed, You two are pests. Don't you realize you're unwanted guest? You must be crazy, squawked a furious loon. Will the ark be your dinner? screamed the baboon. Seeing the animals get madder and madder made the littlest peer sadder. And sadder. Noah ignored the animals' protest and cries and welcomed the termites who had tears in their eyes. We know you are frightened. We know what you think, but we would never make Noah's ark sink. When the last creatures boarded, rain began dripping. The deck became slick. They all began slipping. The elephant almost fell off the ark, and right up his trunk slid a startled arak. Whoa, said the horses as he started to stumble. And just at that moment, the goat took a tumble. What can we do? Noah asked with a shout. We have to stop all this sliding about. Perhaps we can help, said the littlest pair. Now everybody's eyes look down with a stare. We can make sawdust to give you some traction. Just say the word and we will spring into action. Some leftover wood Noah gave the two. He anxiously watched as they started to chew. Soon there was sawdust in everyone's stall. The ark might sway, but no one would fall. We're sorry, they said to the littlest peer. We weren't too nice. 
we were very unfair. You guys think they were unfair? Yeah, they were unfair. Now Noah spoke to the animals, large and small. He looked at each one. He looked at them all. The way you treated the termites was terribly wrong. But I'm glad you decided... But I'm glad you decided we can all get along. It's important to accept each other's ways because we'll be together for, the, for at least 40 days. So let's put an end to any more hurtful chatter. We're all God's creature, and to God we all matter. The termites just smiled, looking happily and fatter. All right, boys and girls, so you see, in God's eyes, we all matter, even though we might be the littlest, we all have a part to play. Okay? Amen. You can return to your seats now. Thank you. All the children of the world, whether they are black or white, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Good morning, church. Please don't listen to the voice. Listen to the words, please. When on life a darkness falls, when the mist falls chilling, part and sign post lost in doubt, loveless unfulfilling. Reach us, Jesus, from your cross. Though we feel forsaken, keep us through that aching night till new dawn awaken. When the dreams and vows of youth Painfully accuse us, stab our conscience, steal our work. Christ will not refuse us. Peace the world cannot provide. Daily resurrection. Strong companion at her side for each new direction. Come and meet him, friends and Lord, through the gospel story. Open doors to life and peace. When the into glory, all who seek him soon are found. May his close relation, Christ our pathway, Christ our home, Christ our sure foundation. Sabbath, everyone. You know, had it not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Amen. 
Let me say that again. Had it not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Whatever you went through this week could have been worse. And so had it not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? You know, sometimes um, we feel as if misery is always seeking our company. It never leaves. You never get a break. You know, as a friend of mine said to me, like, when I overcome one thing, something has happened. So, but, but there, there's a little, um, just a little minute little, um, you know, peace within that transition. And so why should I even take comfort in that? Because I feel like if I start to rejoice, then something else is going to happen again. And so I just brace myself for it. You know, um, but you know, that is life, you know, and, and sometimes life has, uh, well, I, I know that for many of us, life has kicked and boxed and bruised us this week, yeah, and, 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 and you know, some of us are so overwhelmed by, by the trials that we went through this week, it, we, we feel consumed and, and we just have a little enough to drag our tired little self to church and even in the process of doing that of, of dragging ourselves to church we made the mistake of thinking we did that in our own strength but it was God who did that for us it is so we ought to give God thanks you know um, we, we are here to to, to worship and to fellowship and to be re-energized and to be rejuvenated. And, and the mere fact that we're here, I said, it is something to give God thanks. Because the songwriter says there's, there's a thrill that we feel when we get together with God's wonderful people. Yeah? And so it is good to be in the house of God. God is good. And all the time. God is indeed good. Let me say welcome to each and every one of us. It is good to see you here today. Um, uh, you know, Pastor, he texted me. He, he said that um, he's feeling a little bit better, and he want to thank you for your prayers. Amen? He, 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 he's feeling the prayers. Yeah? Um, and and he, he said he should be here next week by God's grace. So just keep um, praying for um, the man of God. And uh, hopefully we can see him next week. Amen. Um, so today I would like to talk to you briefly on the topic, the art of gentle confrontation. Um, you should be able to see it on the screen soon. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. I pray that you will speak to our hearts today. I pray that you will give your word power, direction, clarity, and simplicity. And may our hearts be blessed today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The power of gentle confrontation, restoring broken relationships. And thank you, Nilla, for reading um, um, that text for us, Matthew 18, verses 15 to 17. So we're going to, um, that's where we're going to take residence today. We're going to spend some time in that text. Um, the story is told of a man, an elderly carpenter man named Samuel, who is known for if his craftsmanship shift and, and, and his gentle spirit. And, and he, so he had a workshop where he repaired broken, broken um, things. You know what? I think I know why it's not showing on the screen. As I see Gene coming, I figured it out. <laughs> Just give me one minute. And 
and so Samuel, he, he could fix anything. And so one day, this, this, this young man named Daniel approached him. And Daniel is known for his temper and, 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 um, and impulsive behavior and, and his anger. And, and, and so he had a habit of getting into argument with everyone in the village. It doesn't matter who you are. And so he's known for that kind of person, as that type of person. And so everyone ignored him. People just avoided him. They couldn't deal with him. And so one day he came to, to, to Samuel and said, Hey, old man, I have a chair here that I want you to fix for me. Right? And Samuel looked at, the, at, at Daniel and he looked at the broken chair. Um, and he said, Yeah, I can fix that. But you know, life is like a broken chair. So we all have broken parts, you know, there's anger and pride and bitterness, which can break us as individuals and break relationship. And, and, and Daniel said, what do you know about that, old man? And, and so, um, you know, Samuel said to Daniel, bring the chair into the shop. And he started to, started to repair the, 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 the broken chair. And as Samuel was working, he said, you know what? I've learned that, 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 that gentle co confrontation is like repairing broken pieces. You see, you don't smash it. You see, what we're trying to do is to repair what was broken and so you got to be gentle with it you got to mend it carefully you got to address the brokenness with a certain finesse and patience and so daniel became uncomfortable you know because he, he it, it hit home he so he became uncomfortable and he says, but people they, they just don't listen they just get you know um they, they just don't listen and so I, I, have to, I have to respond with, with, with anger. And someone smiled and he said, okay, I, I hear you. But remember, in Matthew 18, verse 15, he said, if your brother um, have an axe against you, go and tell him it's false between you and him. So it's about restoring, not condemning. And so... Samuel handed Daniel a chair and said, remember this. Just as I repair this broken chair, God can mend our brokenness too. We must confront gently with love as we interact with each other. And so Daniel left deep in thought. No, you know, he started to contemplate and he started to think. He started to ruminate over what Samuel told him and so over time now conversion started to take place and so he started to apply what Samuel, Samuel's wisdom and so when he felt the anger he remembered the broken chair he approached people now with gentleness and he, he does so seeking reconciliation instead of confrontation and so gradually Daniel's in, in, um, relationship improved with everyone in the village and so he was not known for his temper anymore, but for his willingness to mend the broken pieces. Amen. And God is calling us to do the same. And so as we, as we, as we encounter brokenness in our lives, in our relationship, well, let us remember the art of gentle confrontation. And sometimes when we think about confrontation, we think about something um, negative, you know, because, you know, I'm going to approach you and I'm going to tell you a piece of my mind. When, so when we think about confrontation, that's, that, that's what comes to mind, but not necessarily. And even if you have to scold somebody or talk to or, or to, um, you know, deal with a situation that is not favorable, how you approach it makes all the difference. Yeah? And so our approach to others should be with love. 
seeking restoration rather than con um, condemnation. So just as someone repaired a chair, God can mend our brokenness. All right, let me see if this is working. It's not. Okay, so the word art. When you think of the word art, what, what comes to mind? Sorry? Art. R-A-R-T. Painting, right? Beautiful painting. What else? Portrait. Okay. So, so, I deliberately choose the word, the art of gentle confrontation, because I'm going to use the word art here as a metaphor, right? So, so let's, let's explore this, this, this metaphor. So here, um, the first thing that comes to mind when you think of art is creativity and skill, right? Yeah. And, and so, as an artist, you know, you, you skillfully wield the brush to create a masterpiece, Practicing gentle confrontation is like that, right? And so, so the, the art lies in choosing here the, the, the right words, the timing, the approach to address the sensitive issue because sometimes our timing is off. And sometimes the word what we choose is not the right words. And then... As we wait for the right timing, as we choose the right word, we now have to be sensitive to the issue. Yeah? So the next thing, is nuance and, and sensitivity. I mean, I'm not, I'm not an artist, and maybe some, some of you know about art. I think um, uh, Naomi, she's a good painter and artist. You, you know that? Did you, did you all know that? I did not know until I saw some of her drawings a, a few months ago. And I'm pretty sure that, you know, um, as an artist, you don't just take the brush and just go like that. No, these are certain nuance to things. So, you know, you want to find, you know, you want to, um, you know, um, get the right shade. Yeah? And so the stroke have to be delicate. And, and, and sometimes some, some artists, they, 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 when they paint, they, they hide certain things within the, the masterpiece. Yeah? And so, they, and, and so when they approach this, they, they approach it with, with nuance and, 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 and sensitivity. And, and so as, as, as Christians, as believers, when we're dealing with a situation in the church, and which can be applicable to other relationships outside the church, we should remember that we are, gonna, we, we are now navigating a sort of emotional landscape. And we should consider the impact of what we do, how we say it, and our actions. The third um, metaphor is transformation and beauty. When I'm talking about art. And think about it in terms of an artist. What is it that they, they're trying to accomplish? And so, and so the art, what the artist does, they want to transform the raw material into a beautiful masterpiece, right? Yes, this is what they want to do. They want to transform it into something beautiful. And so, the, and so, so as, 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 um, as Christians dealing with an issue in the church... Just like the artist wants his masterpiece to be beautiful, we have to remember that, 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 that 
um, the, the beauty of what we are doing lies in the restored relationship. That's the outcome. Restored relationship. Personal growth and healing. And so the fourth metaphor is intent and with purpose. Now, an artist is not going to just draw something like that. Just, you know, there's a purpose to it. They know why they're doing it. Yeah? And so they, they create with intention. And, and, and so maybe they want to express certain emotions in the story, in the art piece. Maybe they want the art to tell, certain, uh, tell a certain story or to provoke a certain kind of thought. And, and sometimes you see people just stand there and look, right? Yeah, and just admire. And some people say, oh, this, I've seen this. You know, this is what I see. And somebody is like, well, I didn't see that. But, you know. So art can tell a story, they can provoke thought. And so in gentle confrontation, our purpose is restoration, resolution, and positive change. Remember, it's about restoration, not condemnation. And the final thing about, the final metaphor is that art depicts craftsmanship and practice. I mean, yes, some people are gifted. They can just, you know, but they still have to practice their craft. You know, they, they, they hone their craft through, through practice. And, and so, we're going to, we're going to, confront a lot of issues in the church. And, 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 I, and I feel like we're doing the same thing over and over again because sometimes when we address an issue, it, it ends in, in bad blood between people. Not just once, not twice, but it seems like um, it, it, it's a thing. So, why not change that now? Why not, you know, so, so now we have to now practice, right? Um, um, gentle confrontation so that when we do it, it won't end in bad blood between Christians. And so as we do it, because I said we're gonna, we, it's going to keep happening, we're going to learn from each interaction, yeah? We, we, yeah, we, we're going we're gonna to learn from the process. And so, and so when it comes up again, what we're going to do, we're going to refine now how we approach this next situation. Because remember, we're always, right, going to, um, um, you know, uh, uh, um, be... Uh, we're always going to refining and, and, and fine-tuning and, and, and learning so that we don't make the same mistake that we did with Sister Jane or, Sister Bra or Brother Brown. So when we say the art of gentle confrontation, we acknowledge it's complexity because it's complex. It's not, as, it's, not, you know, it's not as black and white as we think it is because we're dealing with human beings. We're dealing with human emotions. And so, and so, uh, uh, so we should appreciate the complexity as we deal with situations that, uh, that arises in the church. The need for skillful execution and the potential for creating something meaningful and transformative. That's what we want, just like the artists who take time to create that masterpiece. And if they see that something um, is wrong, you know, they, 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 you know, they, they say, okay, I'm, we're gonna, I'm gonna 
wheel and come again and I'm going to try this, I'm going to try that. Because they have the, the, the end goal in mind. You know, they know what they want. And they know when what they're doing is not on track. And so they pause and they refine and retune. And we have to do the same. We have to do that. And so um, the Bible outlined here a four-step process of confronting sin in the church. The first one um, is private one-on-one. -on -one. Matthew 18, 15. And it says, and if your brother or sister sins against you, go and approve him in, or her in private. And if he or she listens, you have won your brother or sister. So, it says here that we have to address the situation in private. What do you think that is? Talk to me, church. What do you think that is? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Anybody else? There's no wrong answer, you know. Yeah. It, so, you see, God wants us, the, the, you see, Jesus wants us to, to remember it's about restoration. And so first, we have, to add, we have to go to the individual, respecting the individual, respecting their dignity, the dignity of the individual, right? Without, and as we do this, we, we, the process is redemptive. Because if I were to say, you know, um, Nilda, you did something, but I, I didn't come to you. I start to, to include other people, right? Now, what does that do to you as an individual? And maybe... The situation could have been could have ended there, but we don't do that. We 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 skip number one, and we and we move to number two, and sometimes number three, but we gotta follow the process. We gotta follow the process. It makes sense. But you see, but, but sometimes we're not comfortable with one-on-one -on -one relationship. And, and so, and so most, most of us are more comfortable in triangulation. Yeah. So we got to bring in another party, you know. And, and with, in that triangulation, we're not talking to the person directly. I'm, talk, I'm saying, sister, again, could you, you know. I'm not even talking to you, Nilda. I'm talking to Sister Gan. And then, you know, because, right, I said, Sister Gan, could, could you tell Sister Nilda that so and so and so and she should stop and, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. The goal, and in one on one situation, the goal is not to score points, to win. To, 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 but to win the person over through this redemptive process that God has outlined here for us. And so th this step emphasizes grace and, and, and humility and a desire for reconciliation within the community of believers. And so we should not skip number one. Now if number one doesn't work, right, then we move on to number, um, step two. It says involving witness, Matthew 18, 16. But if he does not listen, take one or two with you uh, so that by mouth of two or three witness, every fact may be confirmed, right? And even in doing that, listen, even in doing that, we've got to bring other people who can be trusted A small group of trusted individuals, right? And, 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 and in that, there should be fairness. 
We shouldn't be taking sides. Some of us love to take sides. Even before we know it. You know, and we talk about something confidential, and before you know it, it's on 3ABN, it's on the Hope Channel, it's, it, it, it's everywhere. So, the, the, you know, the presence of other witness ensures fairness and accountability. And it, it also brings clarity to the situation. It brings clarity. Yeah? And ensure that the, the, the you know, um, a fair assessment of the situation. Because remember, the goal, we are pursuing re reconciliation and restoration. And, and, and you know, and the reason why... Um, here, no, the part two is important, you know, even though some of us skip part one and then we go into part two, but then we make a mess of the whole thing, but some of us keep up part one and part two, right? If we know the whole church, no. So, so, so here we're in part two now, and, and I, I may be saying something that, Maybe a little bit insensitive, but sometimes I'm not aware. See, awareness plays a big part in this. Because if you're not aware of what you're saying and doing, you're going to hurt other people. And so in this trusted group of, of uh, uh, you know, Simpsons can say, hey, come on, brother, come on. You know, or nudge me and, and, and you know, and, I, and I'm going to pull back. And we should be, and we should, we should become good at reframing. Yeah, we, we should be good at that. We should, you know. And so now, if part one, step one doesn't work, step two doesn't work, never bring the matter to the church. If he or she refuses, tell it to the church. So, so, so here we see now there's a huge escalation of, you know, of what is happening. Yeah, I mean, there's some serious stuff happening now because what an escalation, right? <laughs> so we escalate the process now to the broader, to the broader community of believers, to, 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 to the church. Now what we're doing, what we should be doing is, is that we should be seeking wisdom and guidance from the spiritual leaders in the broader community. You know, that's how I'm reframing it because that's not how we, that, that's not how we do it, you know. Mm -mm. So w when I include now the church, no, you know, I, I'm saying, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm here now and I'm like, okay, so... We're seeking now some guidance from now the spiritual leaders, from the believers. And the church is going to come together and we're going to pray, right, as a, as, a, as a collective unit. Because our goal is still restoration, folks. Even though it has escalated to this point, the goal is still restoration. And we should always, and in doing that, we should maintain a spirit of humility, a spirit of love, and we should approach, approach this with grace. Because remember I said, just as how the artist is trying to paint a beautiful masterpiece, They did that with intent and with purpose because they want to accomplish something that will wow each and every one of us. Like, wow. You know? And it is such an amazing thing when we're dealing with a situation and it, it has escalated to the point where the whole church is involved and it ends right there. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. But 
that doesn't work, what do, what the Bible says we do in in um, seventeen? What does it say? We should what? If he, he actually refuses to listen now to the church, let him be as a Gentile and a tax collector. You know, as I, as I was thinking this, I, I, was, I was looking over this, and I'm like, man, the Gentile, the tax collector, he, the, the, he, the, these are the people who Jesus went out of his way. Go seeking for, you know. Even though, let me get back to that. So, it says here that we should treat the unrepentant person as a Gentile or tax collector. So, but we should still do this with a spirit of love and humility. Because what we're doing now, we're just setting some boundaries. That's what we're doing. Yeah? That's, that's really what we, we're setting some boundaries here. We're saying, okay, so all the step hasn't worked, and it has reached here, right? And um, so we're going to set some boundaries here, right? Yeah? Yeah? Um, Still maintaining hope for eventual reconciliation. And why did the Bible and 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 and, and well, I mean, we, we've we've went through the process and we see that some people can be really hard to deal with. Because we're dealing with human beings. I'm telling you, the situation is complex. It's complex. Right? And th there are some people who will remain unrepentant. Right? I mean, I'm not going to kid myself and say, hey, you know, um, you know it's once we follow the process here, it, the, per you know, we, the person will know. Sometimes it doesn't always work. But, but, but if it gets to that church, that sh you know, we, we, we should do that with, with, with brokenness in our hearts. You know, I was, I don't know why I was saying, that, she said that when Jesus spoke those hard, harsh words to the Jews, the, um, the religious leaders, man, his, his heart was broken. He didn't want to do it. It didn't bring him any joy. And so if we reach to this and we have to do this, it should not bring us any joy. It should make us uncomfortable to actually do this. And the Bible says, um, you know, um, treat the person as a tax collector. And notice, Jesus, his hands is always outstretched. Even, even if it reached to that point, He's, he's always saying, you can always come back. The prodigal son came home to love. The father was there looking for him every single day. Day and night, the father was looking. Because there's something about love that just could not let him go, sister, again. And, 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 and that should be our attitude also. So if that person decided to come back to church, they, they miss the fellowship. You know, they, 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 they miss the worship. They miss the good food. Some, <laughs> they miss all those things. And, they, and, and we see them. Man, listen, we should rush and hug them and embrace them and say, Welcome. We didn't stop praying for you. Even though the situation worked out, you know, like it did, it broke our heart. And so, you know, 
even in, when it reaches that, we should still try to seek reconciliation. Because the heart behind gentle confrontation is an expression of love and not judgment. We care enough to address the sin because we desire the wholeness for one another. You know, we can't let sin stay in the camp. No, we can't do that. We have to address it. But we got to do it, right, in love. The goal is always redemptive, not punitive. Even in discipline, we seek reconciliation. Our actions reflect God's heart for his children. So we are, we are not cast off. Even when we feel like, even, even, even when, when, the, when, when we we, we, we we have gone through the process of, of being treated like an unbeliever. We are still not cast off in God's eyes. And the says we always have to weep and cry and mourn because of our mistakes. But she said that we are not cast off. And we are not forsaken. You may feel like that. But we are not cast off or forsaken. And so, the question is now, how do we, how do we respond when we are confronted about stuff that we are doing? You see, it's, it was easier to, 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 to deal with, Yeah? But we know that we do some stuff. And when people approach us, what is our attitude? How do we respond when confronted about our own issues? Are we open to correction and, and restoration? Are we open to that? These are some questions to ask ourselves. So let us pray, folks, for, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion as we deal with individual, as we deal with people. God's children. Yes, they may have left the fold, but... We should still, the songwriter says, we should go rescue the perishing, care for the dying, snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. That is what God has called us to do. And so let us embrace this commission. Let us embrace this mandate from God. And as we embrace the art of gentle confrontation, may our interactions, folks, within the community of believers reflect Christ's heart. That's the number one goal. You know, I, I'm, I, you guys remember this movie, What Would Jesus Do? Or there was a saying also, there was this WWJD. It was a big thing back in the days, right? What would Jesus do? And if we were to ask ourselves, every single time we have an interaction or, or we have to confront somebody, what would Jesus do? Then I think we will pause, yeah? And make us think, how are we going to do this? Is my timing right? Is my words sensitive enough? 
enough and, and compassionate enough. And so we, 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 we have to always ask these questions, right? What would Jesus do? And then that will help us to deal with the situation. As we reach out to those who stumble, we should always be seeking unrelenting forgiveness and reconciliation. Because just like Jesus didn't give up on us, we should not give up on anyone. Even though the situation has been escalated to the point where they are no longer among the community of believers, we should still go seek them out and pray for them and encourage them so that they can be in heaven with us. Amen. May God bless you as you think on these words. May we change now our approach as we interact and deal with situation in the church because it's going to come up. As a matter of fact, there's probably stuff going on right now. I mean, I don't know what's going on, but there's probably stuff going on right now. And so those who are hearing what I'm saying, may, we, may you think about how you're going to approach the situation now because your goal is reconciliation and not condemnation. May God bless you. Amen. May the congregation please stand for our closing hymn, 499. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to
our Lord and God to receive glory, honor, power, for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created. Surely your presence was here today. Thank you, Father, for us being your masterpiece and we lift up to you that you can change us, transform us, and have us be, to have discernment and that we can be led by you, Father. Um, we thank you as we go out, that we go out different and not the same way we came in. In your precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen.